Hello and welcome back to Dicebreaker, where I am joined by Matt Jarvis, editor-in-chief of Dicebreaker's uh, illustrious website, um, where all sorts of fantastic written content is written. Um, but none of that content, apparently, Matt, is about Tashkalar, because you've never played it. I have never played Tashkalar. You know what? It's actually just one of those games that's completely passed me by, for the most part. I know, I know the name, but mm -hmm. I know very little about it. So... I think... I confuse it with a load of other games. <laughs> that, I wouldn't blame you because, it, boy, the theme is generic. Um, <laughs> however, uh, this is by legendary game designer Vlada Trivatel, which I'm sure I've butchered the pronunciation of. Um, but uh, you may know him from Code Names mm -hmm. and from um, Galaxy Truckers and and all that good stuff. Uh, but this is probably the most abstract game he's ever made. Um, it is. You know, it's kind of like it's a game about placing tokens, which when you say it out loud sounds incredibly oh, dull. But it, it has this kind of like you know, like Magic the Gathering style, we're both like summoners in an arena kind of vibe. So we're summoning creatures to attack each other with. Um so in front of you you will see my hand of cards, because we're from my perspective here. Um, which are all looking uh, pretty confusing, I'm sure. Uh, but on the left here, you've also got a uh, a sort of grid based board. So there's there's mm. three ways that you can play Tashkala. There's three different game modes. Um, when you've got two people playing, there's only two options. We're going to do the simpler one, which is called Deathmatch, which is okay. literally we need to um, kill a certain amount of enemy pieces to win. So with uh, <laughs> essentially with like the the main game mode high form it's called which makes it sound like a sort of jedi like yes <laughs> i'm a practitioner of the high form of <laughs> it's all ranakin i have the high form <laughs> um so that's basically like an objective based thing where you'll get points um right. so there'll be something like you know have this many pieces on green spaces for example or destroy this many enemy units or whatever for us we're literally just trying to kill each other's pieces oh, yeah. um and points are they work like this. So there's there's three levels of token. You've got one sword, which is just like your sort of generic... Um, I think they're called like... Uh, there's probably a, a thing here that says... I think it's like a, a common... There you go. A common piece. Um, got you. If you kill two of those in a single turn, you get a point. If you kill one uh, double-bladed sword, which you can see on this um, catch-up card that I've got here. They're like crossed, the crossed ones. Yeah, so that that's like an upgraded piece. You kill one of those, they're worth one point each. And okay. then um, you have legendaries. So you'll see, I've got like the little scoreboard here in the bottom right. So the legendary pieces are the ones with the big helmets on top. Um, you've only got three of those, but they are worth one point for everyone you have on the board. And then I think they're worth two points if you kill one. So they're they're very, very good. Right. Um, so the way this game works is we've both got our own uh, deck full of like unique cards. We're both playing as the sword cards, which means we're, we've got identical decks in different colors. So that makes it a little bit <laughs> easier to tell what's going on when it's your first turn. So I'm playing as red and Matt is playing as blue. Um, mm. On top of that, though, so you would have drawn three of your sort of like cards that are from your deck. On top of that, you've got two legendary cards which is how you spawn legendary creatures, that's from a shared pool of cards. So okay. we both have access to the same ones, but obviously there's only one of each. And then you've got this double-sided, like, grey stone tablet card, which is basically a catch-up card. So if you're quite far behind, you can trigger one or both of these things to give you a little bit of an extra edge. So got you. the way this game works is you've got two actions every turn. You can either place a token or you can play a card. So I am going to kick things off as the first turn. I have to place a, a token next to a square or something. So I'm just going to, yeah, there we go. So I'm just going to place my token there. You place yours in the other one. And then you get the first turn. So first turn, you've only got one action. So you're probably going to place a token. But the way it works is to play a card, you have to match. the. Uh, okay, um, I was going to ask about this. Right. Yeah, you have to match the, the pattern that's on that card. So... These can be flipped and rotated and in any orientation, as long as you make that pattern. Uh, they can be mirrored even. Um, but you do have to bear in mind the the rank of the pieces on the card. So on all mine, they're all sort of single-bladed ones. But if you see something that has, for example, if you look at a legendary card, you'll mm -hmm. see some of them need to be at least two swords. 
but it's very much at least it doesn't have to be exactly right so you wouldn't have to have exactly you know five single blades and one double blade to spawn this card that i've got on screen here um once you do that once you spawn that creature it spawns in the white box that you've got there oh okay so that it actually yeah so it's an actual token that you put down and you'll right. see in the top left of the card the rank of that token so this is how you get right. your double sorted people down so gotcha. i'll i'll sort of expose myself here and say that i've got a griffin rider here so they've got like a sort of um uh, sort of like upside down tick pattern and then when i place it down i place it in the white box it spawns as a two-bladed sword when you spawn a token on top of another token it destroys it as well so if you uh, okay. that's another way of killing people off so you can like if someone's got a double-bladed sword i think you can spawn a double-bladed sword on top of it to destroy it um, and then the Griffin Rider can do a combat leap, and if she does, you can then uh, downgrade her and place a common piece on an adjacent square to her, for example. So, okay, I know that's a lot of information, <laughs> um, but one last thing. Tokens uh, can only kill things of their rank or lower. Right. So you'll have cards that allow you to do... Uh, movements essentially because you can only place a token on an empty space so you can't get a kill by just placing a token on top of me you have to use cards to get kills right so the only way that you can do that is either a card effect says you know destroy a piece or whatever or it says do a standard or a combat move with a combat move if you move a token onto um a token of the same rank or lower it destroys it with a standard move is usually just move using to move them around into different places but you can kill something of a lower rank. So a two-bladed sword, a, or two-sworded piece. <laughs> An upgraded piece can kill a common piece, for example, with only only using a standard move, because they're like, you right. know, oh, whatever, get out of my way. <laughs> so I know that's a lot of information. It is an abstract game, which makes it difficult to explain. But as soon as we start playing, I think you'll get, get the vibe of it. So basically, When they move, is it just one space at a time, or is it? Yeah, you can go diagonal or, or orthogonal. It's just okay. a, an adjacent space. And it okay. will it will tell you how many moves you do with the card. Okay. Uh, all right. You may invoke a flare. Or... So the flares are the okay. are the um, grey cards. The way that basically the way they work is they've got like a little token on each one. So mm -hmm. I've got one here that says three upgraded and one that says six normal. That's basically if the opponent has that many more pieces of that type than you. Oh, okay, right, yeah. So yeah. I see how it balances. Right. So if, you, if you've got three more um, upgraded pieces, I get to do the top action on this card. And you, can, on, yeah. you can do both. Usually they just give you an extra turn or something. So I am going to... Do the, do the red and green squares make a difference in the mode we're playing? Or... Not in the mode we're playing and not with the decks that we're playing. But there okay. is, there's a faction you can use that use them and there's obviously objectives as well. Okay, I'm gonna go one and two. Oh wait, hmm? how did you place two? Oh, you did the first action, so you only get one action. Uh, okay, after right. that, it's two. I was about to call shenanigans. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. I feel like we've lost so many audience members already. Just like, what is happening? <laughs> you must click on board to place that being. Oh, there it is. The first spawn. So Matt has just so I summoned a can't summoner. attack you by placing a piece on top of your piece, can I? Um, no. So you can only place pieces in empty empty squares. I see. Uh, okay. Guess I'll do that. So the summoner allows Matt to spawn new units in a in a shape in front of them so that's usually best for like making more complex patterns that you've got coming up um so i am going to place a token here and then i'm going to play my first card the master of intrigue uh oh okay so the master of intrigue allows me to do up to three moves i have a Whoa. standard moves with the master of intrigue himself or combat moves using the pieces that we use to summon him so I'm going to go one, two, one, two, uh, and I've got a third. Oh, we can do a, oh no, that's just a standard move with the master, isn't it? So I need to think about what I've got coming up. Um, let's. I get the feeling that I made a mistake in my last turn. Yeah? Well, just in terms of like you immediately destroyed both of them, but. 
the the death match is like super super punchy like you'll you'll find yourself like <laughs> losing most of the tokens you put down <laughs> i think okay i am my turn so that is the first point and i've uh, i know people moan about this in the chat so we've got the scores in the bottom right here i've got my first point and i okay. think we i'll check it in a bit but i think we uh finish up when we well we start our end turns when somebody hits nine Okay, Matt's up to something. He's up to something. Oh, another spawn here. Summon a bomb! Yeah. If summoning the bomb is your last action... Oh. Darn it. Oh, did you do it as your second? <laughs> you can undo. Yeah. yeah, I will undo. Okay. Well, well I know you've know got that I've now. Got. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. As you can probably expect, people at home, the bomb blows things around it up. <laughs> uh, so you don't redraw any cards? Um, no, you've got one of each, I think, yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh... When, you, when you say redraw, sorry, what do you mean? As in, like, refill your hand? Yeah. No, no, you do refill your hand. Oh. Oh yeah, I see. I see. Uh okay. You make me quicker for or no, that's fine. Okie dokie. Right. <laughs> um It's quite a lot to think about here. Am I oh, it's just... yeah, no, it's it's particularly because like all the you can mirror the cards and rotate them. So I'm just looking at these pieces, trying to work <laughs> Obviously, out when you play it um, like physically. You're like you have the cards like this, and you're like, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. At least with like things like Board Game Arena, you can just be like, does that work? And then if you click on it, it's like, well, so let me do it. So it must yeah. work. <laughs> okay. Um... The trickiest thing is like you can't just go oh just kill one piece because you need you need at least two commons to get a point. Mm. So if you just kill one thing, then it's a waste. Uh, so I think with that in mind, I'm going to place a piece here, and I'm going to spawn the Griffin Rider. Oh, that doesn't sound good. So the Griffin Rider is a is an upgraded piece. You can do a combat leap which, as you can probably expect, allows it to fight anything on the board. Um, so I'm going to go over here. Oh, that's not good. That is not good. And then... I may then downgrade her and place a common piece of your colour in an adjacent empty square. Uh, no, I'm going to skip that. Okay. Okay, so that's two points. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, boom. Whoa, there's the bomb. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, of course, right. It doesn't kill your double swords because it's... Just commons, yeah. Gotcha. Uh, okay. Okay. Hmm. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, yeah. You sound so confident in your actions, Matt. Oh, it's not confidence at all. It's me going, uh, mm, uh, <laughs> oh, no, I was very going. much joking. Oh, right. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, well, I'm up against like a mar. You, this is like one of your favorite games, right? I've heard you I have played a lot of this. this before, yeah. Um, okay, I probably need to do some setting up now. So, in the physical version, mm -hmm. are these tokens like cardboard tokens, or are they kind of yeah, they're just little Wasty chits. Plastic. Um, oh, okay. They're double-sided, so the single sword's on one side and double on the other. Um, okay. Hmm. Feeling the pressure, yeah? Starting to sweat. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, by the way, I think on the scoreboard, you should be able to see um, the difference between our token counts as well. 
So you see the uh, one underneath, I see. Yeah, yeah. It will show you that I've got two more of the cross swords. Right. The the legendaries are so complicated. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. I think I'm just going to... Uh... I find it kind of interesting that they come in and they do their thing, but then they're just... Well, that's it. They, they immediately all... just become normal pieces again. Well, no, so they're also... Obviously, it's a legendary piece, so like it can only be destroyed by like special card effects or mm. a... Um... Or another legendary. But also it's um what was I gonna say? It's uh Oh my brain. <laughs> oh, it counts as a point for as long as it's alive. So if you can keep it on the board, it's like more score, basically. Oh Okay, so combat moves. Yes. Combat move, you can destroy something of your rank or lower. Okay, and common move? Common move, you can destroy something lower than your rank, or you can just move. Okay. So you've played the Hypnotist. You may choose up to three common or up to two heroic pieces in one enemy color and do one combat move of each. So if I move... So it, I'm doing I'm doing combat moves with your pieces. So you could make me kill myself, basically. Okay, right, yeah. But if I move them onto me... Then it, that I'll will... get a point, yeah. <laughs> right, okay, yeah. That's what I wanted to check, okay. Yep. Hypnotist is very, very good. Oh, that might, yeah, of course, hypnotist, right? Uh, just tilting my head, trying to look at this stuff. Uh, <laughs> it's just kind of interesting. This actually reminds me of Bullet. Really? I've not yeah, in that you're. Bullet. We should play Bullet. I think you'll like it because it is, it's like this in that you're trying to arrange your tokens into very specific shapes. Yeah. So in Bullet, it's just to clear things off of the board. It works almost like Tetris. I was going to say. You're clearing like pieces to throw them at uh, either like an enemy boss if you're in the cop mode or your opponents. Um, but it has a similar kind of thing of like you're lining them up and then pulling off specific moves depending on which character you're playing. Okay. Um, oh, I don't even... Wait, hold on. It says, or discard. I don't want to discard. You must... Oh, oops. What, is, what are you doing, Matt? <laughs> Sorry, I, I clicked on the wrong card and thought I could do it, but I couldn't. And then it said, either do a thing or discard this card. And I don't... I didn't want to discard it. Uh, look, look, let's just... <laughs> let's He's still learning, bless him. He's still just, learning. Let's just go here. Uh, that looks fine to me. All right, two, two. Look at that. Oh yeah. Okay. Hmm. So you said that the decks are different. So the legendaries we pull from a shared deck. Yes, but the there's, others so are in the base game. There's four decks. There's right. red and blue of the same faction, basically, but they're called Northern and Southern. Um, so like we're playing, they're they're basically in there. It's like if you want a completely symmetrical game, um, but then there's two that play completely differently. Pardon me. So you've right. got like a sort of like barbarian-y, Conan-y style looking faction that do a lot of sort of like diagonal shapes. Um, okay. And then you've got like a sort of druidic faction that make these huge clumps of like, they like grow a forest kind of thing, which is kind That's of cool. Literally. But you're not like building your deck, you just. No, you just, you you just, just play draw. with a deck, yeah. Uh, and then there's also expansion factions as well, I believe. Oh, yeah. Um, right. Okay. Uh, one thing I quite like about Deathmatch when you play with three or four people as well. Um, your score is whoever you have killed the least. So, oh, right. so you need huh. to attack everyone as much that's as you can. So you can't just bully one player, which is really yeah. Good. That's like a Tigris and Euphrates, but you have you only get scored on your lowest score, mm. <laughs> which is yeah, like you say, it's a nice way of balancing things out. Yeah, I'm surprised this has passed me by because I like Vlado Travato's games. Like I've played, I think most of them at this point, mm -hmm. but he also just puts out an incredible number of games when you consider that the person that designed code names is also the person that designed mage knight yeah and they are two ends <laughs> so of a very long scale yeah. 
But I do respect the fact that he's just like, I'm never going to make the same game. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay. I think. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to. Oh. I'm just going to do that. Okay. Oh, okay. Hmm. Mm. See, the thing is, once you start learning the decks, you can be like, I recognize that pattern. <laughs> You've also got this thing where, like, if you've got these big clumps of tokens, like, they can be really useful because you can make multiple patterns out of them because it doesn't matter if there's stuff in the way, like, as long as you've got the pattern. Mm. Um, whereas if somebody's got an effect like the bomb, for example, which just destroys <laughs> everything in one clump, it leaves you a little bit, uh, a little bit exposed. Right. Okay. And I suppose because we've got identical decks, if you happen to have a card that matches like a pattern I'm putting together, that probably makes it easier to... Yeah. Which, <laughs> I'm not recognising any of them, but I don't know. Um... That suggests some level of strategy on my end, rather than <laughs> me just picking a card and going, that looks pretty good, I'll go for yeah. that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's... I do think it's like this... This, this deck or this game or faction, whichever one it may be, just seems to throw together. It's like here's a massive bomb with a fuse, like a Looney Tunes acme bomb. <laughs> here's the and, thing that like started the World War. <laughs> like here's a hypnotist. Here's what appears to be Diablo. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's very much just like human fantasy. <laughs> This uh, I've got a card here called Champion, and the sword is bigger than his head, <laughs> like thicker than his head. Oh my god! Okay, all right. Um, huh. Let's. Oh, I've not set myself up very well here. Okay, all right, fine. Let's do this. What? what do you mean I can't summon that here? Rookie mistake. What? What? No, legit. Why can't I summon that here? <laughs> I have no idea. Is it the type of pieces required? Oh, wait. Sorry. I got them mixed up. It destroys that. Yeah, okay. Well, that's uh, great. Oh, that, no. works. that works way better for me. So oh, that also like gives that. me an extra action, which is very nice. Oh, really? Oh, gosh. It's a time mage. Um... What did you wait? Can I see your other oh, is on the side? And then now, oh, see, now I need to do another destroy. So, um, oh god, your tokens are in a really annoying place. You've played this quite a bunch, so like, would you say that it's fairly obviously there's there's quite a lot of strategy in it in like placing your patterns and so on but mm -hmm. in terms of the cards you draw can you just get kind of you know screwed by bad card draw i think like the the standard cards the ones that you draw from your personal deck they're all like pretty bog standard patterns so like it's it's difficult to not be able to make one whether or not they'd be useful in the specific scenario i guess is different because it depends on like where the other players tokens are and like where you've set yourself up and all that kind of stuff but with the um like with the uh, legendaries, like they're always like super like, this is very powerful if you get it in the exact time you need it. <laughs> Whereas right. otherwise it's like, yeah, that's just kind of a point, I guess, sort of thing. <laughs> um, but like, like you know, the flare cards, make sure that nobody runs away with it. Like there's, um, especially when you play in high form, there's like a, a lot of <laughs> like different types of objectives. And they even have a rule where it's like at the start, when you put out the first three, um you can never have like more than two of the same type of objective so you can't have like two ones about having certain uh, okay. control areas or two ones about destroying things or whatever so it, it, it encourages like different play styles mm. so that you know if someone is just running away in one certain area you can just be like all right fine i'll do this instead then because that'll give me some points mm. just play um, with up to four people do you keep the board the same size because it feels like it would get very squishy uh, yeah, no, you keep the board the same size, wow. but you're you're all destroying each other. Remember, so it's yeah, like, 
Well, it feels like it would be harder to pull off some of these patterns. Yeah. There's also a, a mechanic in the uh, multiplayer ones where... Oh, crap, I can do that. Yes, there we go. There's oh. a mechanic in the multiplayer ones where you can... Um, sweet, there it is. Where... Sorry, what was I saying? You can... Uh, once per player per game, you can use one of their tokens to make your pattern. Oh, wow. So you can be like, okay, I'm playing as red, but I have one chance to use like the yellow token of like a token of the yellow players to mm. to make a pattern when I really need it kind of thing. All right, that's bumped me up to 3 points. Mm. See, this is tight, Matt. This you you were like, "Oh god, here we go." But what do we play to? Uh I think the game ends at 9. Wow, that that's a lot. Early. Yeah, 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 but uh... <laughs> once once you start getting things like legendaries out and stuff, like things skyrocket a little bit. Mm. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Speaking of, let's probably look at mine. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, oh, right. Because I've now caught up with you by placing pieces. Oh, so you can't play your flare anymore? Yeah, do you have to play the flare at the you end of the turn? You can play flare, I think, whenever you want. So oh, you, could, you could just you could just wind it back and. That's fine. I've I've hit end turn now. I'm sure this oh, turn see, will right, probably okay. put you back up. So okay. it's all good. Right now, I'm trying to figure out how to make this shape. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I can't, can I? Because you're. There. I'm enjoying this so far. I'll say, like, it's good. I've never right? played it. Yeah. It's really interesting. It's making my brain hurt quite a lot. For, uh, <laughs> it's currently 11 in the morning on a Wednesday. That's, yeah, uh, that's true. So it's quite a lot to wake up to and to try and fit all these patterns. Okay, I'm going to place one there and then I'm also going to oh, do you have so many pieces. Um, here. And place. I'm going to do two common pieces on the here. Box. You've got so many pieces. <laughs> yeah, I've got seven more commons than you now, so you must have a flare in the bag. There it is. <laughs> yeah, uh, let me think. Hold on. Okay, so you've invoked a flare with the lower effect, which is you can place one common piece of your color on any empty square. So you get a free placement, which is pretty good. Yeah. Cool. Right, I, need to, I need to think... Sorry, for people watching at home, I know the, the cards are kind of getting cut off on the screen when I do the previews of Matt's ones, but I'll just try and read them out. <sighs> well, we get a lot of comments on, like, how we fit Board Game Arena into, like, our screens, but it's such a weird thing to try <laughs> and fit into any kind of, like, space that works. The annoying thing is you've got so many pieces that it's really hard to know where to... Where to go? Okay, tell you what. I'm going to go there with that. And I'm going to do this. Oh, no. Then I'm going to do this. Oh, my God. Matt just summoned a cannon. <laughs> <laughs> Does that take out three pieces? It oh takes out all the common pieces in one direction. Yeah, you mean... Oh, look, you can see the... So, like, this is the base. Like, it is kind of a cannon shape. It's quite cool. But yeah, really... it, I quite like the fact that the, the shapes make sense as to what they are. Yeah. Choose one... Um, or, yeah, choose... You may choose one of the indicated directions to destroy all common pieces in that direction. Oh, my God. Uh, right. So that's at least a point, but can you get at least one more common token uh, to make it two? No, is the short answer. <laughs> Ah, uh, that's really irritating. If he hadn't taken out one of my pieces, I would be in prime... If it wasn't for you meddling kids. <laughs> These are quite difficult patterns to pull out, especially now that it's a bit more crowded. Uh, wait, hold on. Uh, sure. I cannot invoke a flare. All right. Are you ready for this, my friend? Uh, no. <laughs> Here it comes. It's time to destroy me. Pretty much. 
because uh, here comes the angel of death. <laughs> oh, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> sound good in no context has the combination of words the angel of death been a good thing. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> when the angel of death <laughs> enters, not only is it a legendary, so it's a point for me, uh, I can choose any one piece other than the angel of death, I can upgrade it, and then I can do a combat leap onto its square with the Angel of Death. What is a combat leap? Combat leap is like a combat move, but you can go anywhere rather than just adjacent. Oh, okay. Just any square. It doesn't any, need to be in a line. Any square. Just... Oh, God. So I'm going to upgrade one of your heroic pieces into a legendary piece and then oh, kill it. That's mean. Which then puts me up to seven points. I told you, once you get the legendaries out, it's like, whoa, here we go. <laughs> okay. Oh, very good. Matt just played the uh, the knight. The knight may do up to three combat moves. You cannot destroy common pieces with them, though. Which is fun and thematic. Very chivalrous. Okay. Oh, boy. Uh... I wish... I think you can sort of see it on the screen. The face on this legendary is so funny. He looks like he's just gone... (sighs) (laughs) Uh, Okay. Right. Go. Here. (gasps) Matt has now just summoned the infantry captain. Do up to two combat moves using pieces other than the infantry captain. So anyone, which is very Here. Oh no, not there. Mm, here. Uh, okay. There we go. That's and three turn. points. So points you up to six. That's a massive move. Mm, that worked out all right. This is my first game. Thanks for helping me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put words in our mouths, poor Kim Arena. <laughs> right, okay. Um, let's see. You've actually got more pieces than me now. Mm, I just saw that. First time in the game. Although you've got your your big uh, angel of death out. Although, like I say, I like the fact that it just becomes a generic kind of like... Like the angel of death clocks out after... Yeah, he does his big thing just and like, now he's yeah, just yeah. sitting around. Just like, I'm off the clock, see ya. <laughs> oh, I'm, yeah, I'm the angel of death during the weekday, but a weekend... You know, I'm just Bill. But the thing is, like, if I if I now use like the infantry captain, for example, I could then do combat moves with him. So it's like the dude's just like, <laughs> get off your ass, angel of death! It's time to show me your war face. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Um, I am going to spawn the cannon. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> um. And then, can I do anything else that's good? Mm, not particularly. Oh, there's Toto. Um, oh, no, I can. I can do something good. I'm going to spawn the champion. Oh. And destroy this. Oh, no. Which puts me on nine points. Wait, does that mean you've won? I or do you think... have to... I'm just gonna check. <laughs> uh, or is it end... like you get to nine and then you score, you win when you score your tenth point or something like that? Um... Oh, that's a uh... that's really annoying. Oh, never mind. Uh, it's eighteen, not nine. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> it ain't over till it's ball. over. Oh, you can see your discarded cards. I didn't realize that. That's handy. I could probably, if you've played one that I've already played, I can use that to give people a preview of the card that you just did. I don't know what to do here. Oh, sorry, no. We also trigger the game when a deck runs out of cards as well. Ah, okay. Yeah. So we've got nine and eight in our decks. Uh, Oh, you've really really done me dirty here. I did a lot of damage in that turn. Mm. You need to get a legendary out, Matt. 
I can't. You, I was setting up for one, and then you came along and it wrecked it. It did look like you were setting up for one. There is a card. I don't know if you've got it or not, but there is a card in the legendary deck called the Bone Catapult, and it's 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 bloody hilarious. <laughs> I have exactly that card. Uh, that's not the one I'm setting up for, for what it's worth. Uh, oh gosh, right. Mm, 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 mm. 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 This is a tricky one. Uh, oh gosh! Uh, right. Uh, I'm not even sure what to do. Uh huh. There is. A lot on the line here, Matt. Your pride. <laughs> right. <laughs> For example. <laughs> For example. Examples include your pride. Uh, I don't know if I'm making a mess of this, but I'll I'll do what I can. I feel like you may have this in the bag. Although playing to 18, that's you're only just halfway there. Yeah. I've just realized that, you know, the knight, the spawning pattern for it is like the the like pattern in which you move a knight in chess, which is kind of cool. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. That's quite neat. Not that I have a knight or anything, you know. <laughs> oh, it's me. Oh, right. Well, yeah, I have yeah. a knight, so. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. Yeah. Oh. That's big. That is big. Um... So that's what two points for you straight off. Two points, first turn, two points. Now, feels like when you're like, I know that there's the flare to to catch you up, but it's quite difficult to to bring it back when someone starts running away. If you've got so few pieces, yeah, because like you filled the slots, which make it really hard to make the patterns. think I want to do that. I've got an incredibly weird pattern to try and rotate. <laughs> okay, let's think about this. Okay, I'm going to use this flare. Whoa. That is Here. Here. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Matt has uh, triggered two effects on one flare card. Place two common pieces of your color on empty squares and place one common piece of your color on any empty square. And so that's here. three token places for free. No uh -huh. action required. Now check this. Bam. Oh, it's the it's the gun tower. Bam. The gun tower is like an upgraded version of the cannon because it can kill uh it can kill a heroic and pieces. This? As well. Whoa! It's the master of intrigue. Standard moves with the Master of Intrigue and or combat moves using non-legendary pieces that we used to summon him. Free moves. Okay. That. Mm -hmm. That. Mm -hmm. That. Mm -hmm. That is three points. That felt pretty good. That was a very good turn. Puts you up to nine, so it's 12 plays nine right now. I feel like I am not smart enough to consider the fact that I'm moving these pieces and probably messing up future patterns but at some point I just need the immediate thing of I just want to stick it to you and take as many pieces off the board as I can. Uh, more importantly Matt you've messed up one of my patterns <laughs> True. like quite wholeheartedly <laughs> um, Good. okay Oh god. Um Oh, that's really messed me up. I think oh, I think I'm going to Oh, you've got your flare though probably, right? Not quite. Oh, cuz you I've got five more common pieces than you. Yeah. If you had six more. <laughs> um Okay. All right, I'm running out of cards that are useful right now. <laughs> Let's think about this one. Um, let's do that. Uh, 
Don't worry about that. Don't even don't even look at the pattern, honestly. There's you you definitely won't recognise it. It's definitely not one that you've already played, so you should definitely know. Uh I've honestly I missed where you put stuff down because <laughs> I was too busy looking at my own patterns. Uh Okay. Uh Right. Here? Here. Wait. Da, 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 da. Here? Oh wait, hold on. Have I? <laughs> have I confused Remember myself? You've got an undo. Oh, here, here, and then. Oh, the Griffin Rider. Here? Yeah. And then a common piece. You you may downgrade it into two common pieces. You don't have to. Oh, I see. I see. I think um, that, I think that's supposed to be the rider dismounting, which is kind of cool. Yeah, I'll skip. Yeah, I kind of like how it's the thing is ridiculous because, like I say, it, it just feels like they've just thrown a load of stuff at a wall. Mm. Uh, and yeah, like the, yeah, there's still bits where you're like, oh, I, I can see what's going on. Yeah, that. that's cool. Uh, right. Right. Okay. Let's do one of these. And then... Uh-oh. Uh -oh. And then something else. <laughs> um... Ooh. Ah. Oh. That would have been really good, yeah. <laughs> if I'd done that. <laughs> I wonder if I can do that. Hold on. Let me try that again. Oh. oh. Let me just let me just think about this one for for a, a hot second. The imagery captain seems pretty good once you've got imagery captain is great, out. yeah. Yeah. It's a good late game card to get. I think. Hmm. I think I actually want to do this and then this because then I can play the hypnotist. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, up to three common or two heroic in one enemy color and do a combat move of each. Oh, that's that feels bad. <laughs> <laughs> I say, having used that card earlier for my own gain. I think. I can't I can't make your heroics kill each other, which is annoying. But I think I'll just mess up your pattern over here by doing some random stuff. Pattern a very loose term to describe what I've got going on. <laughs> okay. A solid two points brings me up to fourteen. So you you see eighteen and you're like, whoa, that's a lot. And then like once you start getting the combos out. Hmm. Okay. I'm gonna use this. Up to three standard moves using common pieces. Oh, no. but... Mm. Yeah, standard moves are common pieces. Can't kill anything, yeah. Yeah, that's annoying. Uh... So it's basically just make a pattern. Wait... Okay, wait, three common moves, all right? Mm-hmm. Ah, oh, nads. Mmm. That's a... That's a tricky one. Uh, right. Okay, no, I think I can do this. I hope I'm right. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Here and there. Oh, wait. no! No! <laughs> Bye. Matt just killed my legendary. <laughs> oh my god. Matt okay. summoned the champion. You may destroy one adjacent enemy piece. If that piece was legendary, you also destroy the champion and gain an action. Yeah, which I'm oh, very I'm very happy to very take good. that loss. That was incredibly good. Uh, oh man, okay. Uh, apologies for the folks watching at home where 70% of the audio from my end is me going, uh, mm, uh. <laughs> I'm just showing people a preview of that card. 
so they can see what, pretty what just happened. Outrageous. Which means Matt has already bagged himself two points for the round. But what can he do with the rest rest of his actions? Okay. Okay. So one here. One here. Then this upgrades. And then sure. Oh, you just did the chronicler. <laughs> yeah. I was just never mind. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> oh, because it's uh, a standard move. Okay, so no extra points, but a bit of disruption. No, but yeah, just hmm. just getting up in your grill. Quite a lot of disruption, actually. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm going to spawn the Chronicler. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, wait, hold on. Your double swords count as standard pieces for patterns. Yeah, well. like I said, that's the minimum they need to be. Not, oh, not the exact. okay. Have I've been, been struggling this way with the... harder for myself. Okay, yeah. I, I, sorry, I did say that, but I probably yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have no doubt that you did. I just completely missed it. That that would make that much easier. Let's do that. Because yeah, I've been being like, oh well, I can't, uh, I can't do this pattern because they're all double swords. Or yeah, choose that's one of your pieces other than the cavalry captain. You need to do it. Up to one combat move and up to two standard moves. So I'm going to go. Lamo, uh -oh. Lamo. Oh no, Lamo! And, wow, that was that's rough. That's a couple of Blamos for you right there, and that gets me up to seventeen. Up to seventeen. Seventeen points. <laughs> oh god, uh, that's really messed me up. <laughs> We should play some high form at some point, Matt. With the uh, Jedi Masters. Because it is like like th this is cool and tactical, but nowhere near as much as when you've got like very specific objectives that you're both working towards. There's a lot of denial that goes on. It's good. Okay, Matt has just played the cavalry captain. <laughs> okay, so that can take up that. Mm, in there. Well, one extra move if you want it. Nope. Uh, I cannot invoke this flare. Okay. <laughs> that doesn't sound good for me. <laughs> I'm going to play the messenger. Uh oh. Uh, What's the messenger do? The messenger choose allows me to choose up to one. Um, choose one of my non legendary pieces and a direction. Oh. <laughs> any number of standard moves. Oh, that that's. Direction. Yeah. Well, GG. Bloop, yeah. Bloop, bloop. <laughs> um, and then I've got an extra turn. You don't even need it, do you? I think I just trigger the end game. I don't know if it immediately finishes with me winning. Uh, that doesn't help. Matt, can I even summon that? I don't think I can. This is the uh, the penis summon, this one. <laughs> <laughs> There's always going to be one shape. Um yeah, I guess. Is it the High Priestess? It is the High Priestess, yeah. yeah I have <laughs> that exact really same good. card. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. That is 18. Yeah, this is the last turn. Yeah. This is the last turn. <laughs> uh, da, da, uh, da. Okay, well, let's go here. Let's do this. Kill that. Whoa, the assassin. But it's not enough. Oh, we both get an extra action. Uh, well, I will summon the, the penis. <laughs> <laughs> um, just for the sake of of banter. I can do a standard move. Ooh, she moved on, not upgraded common piece adjacent to her. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty cool. 
Um, although I don't think that allows me to do anything very useful. <laughs> um, no, that's fine. I'm just going to place a token because it's game over anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying so hard to get the fire elemental out. I got very close and then you messed up my pattern. I, uh, it's oh, really tough. New trophy. Tashkalar, good player. <laughs> <laughs> I did not get that part. I did not get the trophy. <laughs> Thanks very much, Board Game Arena. Oh, and regular player as well. <laughs> oh. Wow. <laughs> oh, there it is. Matt, what do you think after your first game with Tashkalar? I enjoyed it. I liked it a lot. I think it's it was definitely a lot to wrap my head around. Like, I made some mistakes. Yeah, I uh, I. The only honestly, the only person who I've ever played who has won their first game is Zoe. So, like, <laughs> there, yeah, there's um, there's a, there's a lot to take on when in your first game, and I think the first few turns you're just sort of like, Ugh! so you kind of give yourself a little bit of a um, of a hamstring, unfortunately. Yeah, once, once you get it, it's it's real good. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I think I like I say I've made things harder for myself, uh, which is my own mistake in thinking that I couldn't use the the upgraded pieces for normal patterns. Mm which was on me, but I don't I don't think that would have changed things drastically. Well, you might have got a legendary uh, out, which would have been exciting. Maybe, yeah. I got very close, but you did just decimate that pattern at one point. You, you just come came swinging my legendary, in. though, which was incredibly exciting. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's cool. I really liked it. I'd be interested. So the other decks, do they just have completely different patterns, completely different abilities? Yeah, completely different. Uh, so, cool. there's, so I think there's like three expansion decks, which is literally just like a new deck with new colors. Um, and there's in the base box, there's the beige one, which are the barbarian guys. So they've got lots of like, they have like lots of like diagonal patterns and also, um, like effects that use the green and red spaces and stuff. So you can be uh, like, if you spawn this on a green space, it like kills someone or something like that. Um, but also you've got the, the sort of druidic, um, forest faction where they like, they just build these huge clumps of tokens that, whilst a fun to kill also means that they can just make any pattern very easily so they can huh. they can get a lot of things on the board um i will say that some of the art in the druid faction is uh not great <laughs> specifically like because like the whole game is like just pretty generic looking fantasy people and then yeah. there's this one like sort of forest nymph who's very oh, like boy. i've got an enormous breast and it's like yeah okay good um, <laughs> but yeah but that's fantasy art for you, isn't it? Um, but there you go. Badly. That is Tash Kalar. By yeah, Mirage thanks for teaching Martin. me, Wills. You're that was very fun. welcome. Thank you very much for coming on. Um, if you've enjoyed this, please do stick around. We've got plenty more videos like this on Dicebreaker, and hopefully they'll be a lot less complicated than this one. Uh, we've, <laughs> <laughs> we've also got loads of fantastic content over on Dicebreaker.com, where Matt is our, our fearless champion, sort of selecting all of the the greatest articles to go on the home page and stuff uh so please head on over to there and read some of our fantastic stuff written by matt and the team uh and not to mention you can also grab some exclusive dicebreaker merch from my shopify uh that's dicebreaker.myshopify.com to grab some exclusive merch which uh helps the channel and uh looks pretty damn classy if i do mm -hmm. say so myself Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Please do hit subscribe. Uh, click the bell icon to get notified when we put a new video live. And until we see you on the next video, have a lovely day. Goodbye. Bye-bye.